Hey folks, Joseph Isabori here. What do you know it? Next week is Christmas, which is going to be on a Tuesday, which Christmas Eve is going to be on a Monday, so gather around with the family to celebrate. So I decided to review what else? A Christmas movie review, because I've been doing it so far with Scrooge, as well as Fred Claus. Um, it's Christmas time again, Charlie Brown, and even the new movie that's on Netflix, The Christmas Chronicles. So I'm just going to do like a few more just to get to it. So I want to review a film that came out on December 11, 1992. And this is, of course, an adaptation of a Charles Dickens novel. But this time, it features the Muppets. That's right. You know, Kermit the Frog, Miss Piggy, Gonzo the Great, you know, Ritzel the Rat, as well as Fozzie the Bear, Stadler and Waldorf, you know, Bean Bunny, yeah, Robin the Frog, and all the rest. <laughs> rest of the the puppets. And that is called The Muppet Christmas Carol. Which we have Michael Caine portraying the role as Ebenezer Scrooge. Now I do have the movie on VHS. And I do actually have a copy right here. Um, which I just made directly from from a torrent file uh, that was actually uploaded directly from a laserdisc print um, that I just decided to burn a copy anyway yeah it's right here <laughs> and yeah it's along with the the Peanuts movie HBO First Look yeah th this is my copy so the main reason why I did that is because um, for those who don't know, all these older home video releases actually features a deleted song, which was originally going to be included on the theatrical cuts, but it's been taken down um, mostly because they thought it was too sad. And the song was called When Love Is Gone. And in fact, this is uh, an explanation by director Brian Henson and this was his directorial debut um, he quote that when originally was going to be shown in theaters they actually showed us as a as a test audience uh, the song when love is gone that Bell sung yeah Bell is of course uh, the love interest of Ebenezer Scrooge uh, Brian Henson was protesting this decision to either keep the song or not because of at the time uh, Jeffy Katzenberg who was the head of Disney felt that it was too sad uh, for children around the world for those who've seen the movie and he felt like you know the whole audience are gonna feel very restless so because of that they had to remove the scene but it had to be reinstated on home video releases at the time so it's on VHS and Laserdisc. But that is until 2012 when they finally got a Blu-ray release. It only features the theatrical cut as it was released back in 1992. And When Love Is Gone is nowhere to be found. So thanks a lot Jeffy Katzenberg for that. And I was disappointed because, <clears throat> well, it's good that it finally got an HD print, exactly the way the film is supposed to look. It's just a shame that we won't be able to see that moment because um, it's a right to be sad, all right? There are several sad moments in this movie anyway. That's the whole point. But... <clears throat> I'll say this though, there was one great moment right there in that song, and this this was a very beautiful song too. It was by by the end that just right towards the end where Bell was about to sing the some of the last verse of it. 
you got to see uh, Michael Caine just ready to burst into tears just when he was singing while he was with um, uh, the spirit um, it was of course the ghost of Christmas past um, that moment right there just really worked and it's just a shame that they just had to cut this out they cut out the pacing it, it just ruins it so again you know it is a shame <clears throat> um, now on top of that this is uh, considered to be uh, Brian Henson's directorial debut you know, following the death of Jim Henson because he passed away in 1990 so they were going to continue to go on with another Muppet movie so this is considered to be their fourth theatrical film after uh, the Muppets takes Manhattan as well as the, the Muppet movie which is the first film and the great Muppet caper their second film and it just continues to go on later on as the years follow like with Muppet Treasure Island uh, Muppets from Space some TV movies ahead and of course they brought it back with Disney with the Muppets and Muppets Most Wanted of course in all the adaptations and Scrooge does say bah humbug we do see Marley in change and on top of that we do see all the ghosts exactly how it, it appears no matter what of course, Brian Henson just recently directed the new movie uh, The Happy Time Murders mm, I haven't seen that but I already know I'm gonna hate it well it's already getting bad reviews anyway also I, I always thought this was definitely one of Michael Caine's uh, best performances in a long time because he was doing a lot of movies you know, he just won an Academy Award for his performance in Hannah and Her Sisters, the Woody Allen movie. Just proves how stellar the actor really was. In fact, um, I want to mention that quote in the movie where Kermit the Frog, playing Bob Cratchit, is actually explained to Scrooge, where he says, If you please, Mrs. Scrooge, it's gotten colder, and the bookkeeper staff li would like to have an extra shovel full of coal for the fire. And then the two rats say, We can't do the bookkeeping. Our pans have turned into inksicles. And the second rat says, Our assets are frozen. And this is when Scrooge says, How would the bookkeeper staff would like to be suddenly unemployed? <laughs> and that's when the rats was like saying, Heat wave. This is my island in the sun. Oh, la, 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 la. Yeah, they're like dress. <laughs> yeah, they're dressed up in, in all these hula outfits <laughs> and they escape. Uh, that was a funny one. Funny moment right there. Okay, so let's get to the review. So it's once again Michael Caine, Stephen McIntosh, who later went on to do. Um, the Underworld sequels, second and third, uh, Meredith Braun, uh, Robin Reaver, Jessica Fox, uh, David Shaw Parker, Everett Sanders, along with Theo, Russell Martin, Ray Coldhard, Anthony Hamblin, Ferguson Brazier, Louis Gold, with the Muppet performers by David Goez, Steve Widmeyer, Jerry Nelson, and Frank Oz, along with David Rudman, Karen Prell, Robert Tigner, uh, William Todd Jones, and Don Austin. Uh, it's written by Jerry Joel, that's based on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, and it's directed by was also co-produced by Brian Henson. The movie began set in 19th century London, England on Christmas Eve. 
that's where we meet our narrators, Charles Dickens, he yeah, named after the novelist, is played by Gonzo the Great, and his sidekick and best friend, Rizzo the Rat. Yep, as they narrate throughout the entire film with several funny moments here and there. And this is where we're going to get to. That's where we meet Ebenezer Scrooge, who's played by Michael Caine. Who's a money lender that's the meanest miser in town. Doesn't share any uh, merrier for Christmas. So this is where he rejects his nephew Fred, who's played by Stephen McIntosh, his invitation to a Christmas dinner. Even dismisses the two gentlemen to, by collecting all the money for charity. Um, on top of that, he even tosses a wreath at Bean Bunny, who's a carol singer. His loyal employee, Bob Critchett, who's played by Kermit the Frog, he's working with all the other bookkeepers, and they decided to have a request to take a day off during Christmas since there won't be any businesses elsewhere. So Scrooge suddenly agrees and he decided to go home, you know, just to close up, you know, during this Christmas Eve. And just when he was about to enter his house, this is where he spots Marley. At this rate, ward off. And this is where he screams, Scrooge! Through the uh, door knocker. <laughs> so this is just part of his imagination. Uh, but then he begins to find some noises that's being heard at his house. He thought that it might be a burglar or something, but it turns out to be his red wobe. So he warded it. And he was just having some bread and butter until he spotted the ghost of his late business partners, Jacob and Robert Marley, both played by Stadler and Wardoff. <laughs> yes, the hecklers themselves. <laughs> anyway, they, they represent uh, his record ways, or they'll be condemned in the afterlife, as they were. So they're trying to warn him that he's going to be visited by free ghost, the ghosts of Christmas past, the ghosts of Christmas present, and the ghosts of Christmas future, or in some cases, the ghosts of Christmas yet to come. <laughs> there you go. So, um, just when he was getting ready to bed, by 1 o'clock a.m., he was visited by the Ghost of Christmas Past, who was a childlike, and it was voiced by Jessica Fox, who takes him back in time to his childhood, yeah, with, uh, <laughs> with Dickens and Rizzo hitching the ride, too, yeah, joining in. Um, this is where we begin to spot um, his lonely days at school, while all the kids are just having fun playing outside, you know, just throwing all these snowballs or making all these snowmen or everything else. He decided to stay in school, you know, just you know, doing his work, you know, drawing through all these chalkboards and everything. And, of course, you see all these buses, including uh, <laughs> Shakespeare, on top of the shelf. And, yes, where Dickens and Ritzel sitting around. <laughs> Until, you know, their weight uh, takes the big out of them and just, <laughs> then the the shelf was, was falling, was going, yeah, it was starting to fall off with all the rest of the buses. That's where we meet this Sam the Eagle, who's the teacher. <laughs> um, th there's a funny moment, too, was when the, he was asking the... Scrooge on board, and this is where <laughs> he was asking him, Tomorrow you'll become a man of business. And Scrooge was saying, I'm looking forward to it, Headmaster. 
And he's like, mmm, you will love business. It's the American way. And <laughs> Dickens just whispers to Sam and he just says, oh, it's the British way. Yes, yes, master. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Uh, then it fast forward to when he became a young man. He actually went to a Christmas party, um, which uh, that's where we meet uh, Fozzie Wig. Yeah, Fozzie Bear. <laughs> waka, waka, waka. Uh, but anyway, he was working as an employee at a rubber chicken factory that uh, Fozzie Wig had owned. So Fozzie Wig and his mother decided to throw the party. And that's when Scrooge meets uh, a young woman, which was going to be his love interest, named Belle. It was played by... Meredith Braun. And yes, this is where it cuts directly to the song When Love Is Gone. Uh, yeah, if you have your old copies, then you'll be able to see it. But if you have the Blu ray and the later DVD, it'll be cut. Why can't they just leave it in as a deleted scene? Yeah, see, Disney wasn't smart. The ghost had showed Scrooge how. Bell left him when he chose money over her. So that's when Scrooge suddenly bursts into tears and dismissed the ghost as he returns to the present. By 2 o'clock a.m., that's when we meet uh, the ghost of Christmas present, who's a giant. And he's very merry, too. So he always has the joys and wonder of Christmas Day, and on top of that, he has all the food that he wants, all the Christmas dinner and everything. So he's very big. On top of that, um, Scrooge and the ghost decided to visit Fred's house where, you know, they were just playing games and they're actually making fun of Scrooge. Hard to believe. So then Scrooge and the spirit had then visits uh, Bob Cratchit's house. Yeah, that's where he meet uh, his wife, played by Miss Piggy, named Mary Cratchit, along with Bettina and Belina, two daughters who are twins, and two sons. One is the older brother, named Peter, and the youngest brother, Tiny Tim, which is played by Robin the Frog. So that's when the ghost of Christmas present abruptly ages, just when we begin to find out if Tiny Tim is either going to live this long until Christmas, which that leads to what was going to happen next. Because of the fact that he has an illness, he was under his crutches that he has, and has a cap. So. Because of that, you never know how long will he live. So that's when things suddenly changes until we, we suddenly meet the ghost of Christmas yet to come. And he approaches Scrooge, which we begin to see him as a tall, silent cloak figure. And yes, Dickens and Ritzel suddenly abandoned that because they thought it was too scary. So they probably could end up seeing them by the finale. <laughs> so then the ghost takes Scrooge into the future. And this is where he spots the death of Tiny Tim. Just as uh, Bob suddenly came in with his family. Um, very shocked about the news that he's gone. Before this all even happened... There was a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, people outside. Yeah, it was during a rainy day uh, with their umbrellas, and they're they were actually explaining about the death of a millionaire or some sort. And yeah, this is where it leads to that because it turns out to be Scrooge. So so anyway. 
Smooth suddenly recognized his chairwoman, his laundress, and the local undertaker you know, trading out several stolen possessions of the deceased of a fence named Old Joe. But as we all turn, begin to discover, yes, uh, Tiny Tim did pass away. On top of that, he begins to find his own grave in, in the cemetery, but Scrooge tries to explain to the ghost that that if you know fans could change, you know maybe maybe for the better. But by the time he saw the the grave, this is where he was bursting into tears, and until he found out that all this was a dream. So now he finally changes his ways, and. He hasn't missed Christmas at all, so now he begins to um, repay his dues, begins to uh, spend the charity to uh, the two gentlemen, and they gather around, so they decided to celebrate Christmas you know, with Fred after all, his nephew, and decided to join in with uh, Bob Cratchit and, and his family, and they all gather around for a Christmas feast. And Tiny Tim even says, well, with Scrooge joining in, God blesses everyone. Yeah. There you go. Also to note that this is a musical too. Well, it's, so it does have a lot of great songs, all written by Paul Williams. Uh, but the score is done by uh, Miles Goodman. Wonderful score, by the way. And I love the songs. And it really uh, shows. I mean, it really had a heart in its place. And I really enjoy what this adaptation was going for. Because, after all, there's been several adaptations. I love the moments uh, with uh, Charles Dickens and Ritzel the Rat. Yeah, of course, Gonzo playing Charles Dickens. Yeah, going for all these uh, crazy antics, like for example, <laughs> he actually burns uh, Ritzo's tail where he was about to light the lamp. And he was saying, hey, what are you doing? Light the lamp, not the rat, not the rat. And then Ritzo just fell all the way down into <laughs> a bucket of water, which, yeah, a bucket of freezing water, which causes him to froze. <laughs> and... And Dickens just picks him up and <laughs> just breaks him. Or or even some other scenes where Ritzel was about to jump out, out of the fence and have uh, Dickens catch him, but yes, he missed. And then, but then he forgot to uh, bring in the the jelly beans. <laughs> but he just uh, climbs all the way into the side of the fence and then went back to it. And, and Dickens was like. What? Well, you're an idiot. <laughs> and he's just saying, what, what? Or any other kind of actics that they, these guys have been doing. Like when they're trying to go up on top of the window, you know, where Scrooge is just to see what's happening inside. And then every time he opens the, the window, these two just fell out. <laughs> or any of oh boy <laughs> I can go on and on and on just talking about it uh, but there there are many funny moments from other Muppets too I mean you even got the band too during the Christmas party and playing their music you know, with Animal just joining in <laughs> yeah playing the drums and then of course um Fossil wig was just ready for an announcement, but it was only this short. <laughs> there you go. And it had a lot of wonderful sets that were done by Shepperton Studios in England. Yeah, the way it was all built in by hand, uh, it's it definitely feels like 19th century right there. Although there was a bit of an error at the end of the movie where it actually shows a crane shot. Yeah, which, which that it was there just to actually put together all the the sets, so it would be exactly well put. 
And they also had a lot of control mints with all the Muppets and all the puppets around, so they they move around into place. Um, I also love some of the tilted shots of all the camera movements that they put into the film. And it has a mix of um, tiny bits of CGI in all these shots. Like, for example, you know how they changes the the doorknob into uh, you know, ward off. Or at this rate, when when the um, when the scene where he finally meets the ghost of Christmas yet to come, where you see a whirlpool of how uh, the future would change as they entered, I thought that was really stunningly beautiful how they did that shot. Um, it is very dark at times, but it really works. The characters actually play the performances very well. It plays exactly like how the adaptation would take place. Uh, but most of all, um, Michael Caine was definitely the real star of the film. This is actually one of his best performances ever, without a doubt. I mean, no matter what, he plays him exactly what he expected him to play. And yes, he even replied too, where he says, I'm going to play the movie like I was working with the Royal Shakespeare Company. I will never wink. I will never do anything Muppetry. I'm going to play Scrooge as if, as if it's an utterly dramatic role and there's no puppets around me. So that's exactly what Michael Caine chose to do. In fact, originally they were going to get David Hemmings Ron Moody and David Warner to play the role and on top of that they even were going to get comedian George Carlin to actually play the role which that would have been pretty interesting too but I'm glad they chose um, Michael Caine or at this rate Brian Henson so kudos for him because I'm glad he chose him I mean he's the right choice for, for the role I mean yes I think he's definitely right up there with Albert Finney too when he played the role in the 1970s version of it. In fact, he kind of reminded me a bit like uh, Albert Finney right there. It's hard to believe. Um, now, this movie was a moderate box office success, um, but it only made uh, $27.2 uh, million in North America. Because unfortunately, it was at a tight competition between Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, and Aladdin. So because of that, yeah, the film um, didn't do quite as um, well as, as you may have expected uh, for the Christmas season. But either way, it, it did uh, gross up to $5 million. You know, since on its level of $20 million of its budget. So it continued to go on, but I think that was a shame because I think this movie would have done a whole lot better. But over the years, um, it definitely got a following, and, and it actually played around during Christmas, uh, or the Christmas season on, on TV, so it actually got more to it. It got positive reviews from critics, I'm happy to see that, even though there are a few critics like for example, Gene Siskel, who gave a thumbs down, but did praise um, Michael Caine's performance. Um, I do disagree with Siskel on that, though, about um, the entire movie. But I do agree with him about you know, Caine's performance, though. Uh, Roger gave it a pass, surprisingly. But he felt like, yeah, maybe there could have been... Um, a few more songs to to coop with maybe have um, more uh, at the end of the movie but that's alright um, yeah, and then there are critics who are thinking themselves like yes yeah, it's it's shadowy naturalistic lighting creates a new look or <clears throat> oh, but then there are critics who say oh, it's a talky plotting film that seems to bore children and adults in equal measure, which I'm sorry. I mean, that's what David Keir says. And 
Oh jeez, really? Exactly. Really disagree with that guy. Uh, but other than that, though, I'm glad uh, it got positive feedback for other critics, and they loved it. And I'm just happy to see that it got some of the attention it deserves. And it really shows. Um, I really love it. So, either way, um, if you want to see the movie in its extended form, because that's the original cut, with uh, When Love Is Gone included, um, try to find an old copy of the film somewhere in other places, maybe online if, if, if you could. Maybe if you're lucky, Goodwill or or any first store might carry it if, if you get a chance because it is out of print though keep that in mind and of course if, if you ever find a laser disc you'll be lucky enough to, to do that or maybe your old VHS tape by any chance it would definitely be worth getting on Blu-ray with all the features included and nice features but I, I kinda wish that the song would have been included as a as an extra if they know they don't want to put it onto the theatrical cut but uh, that's the case. Uh, maybe someday I will pick up the Blu-ray and definitely watch it in HD just to see for, for myself um, how wonderful the, the, the transfer really looks because I heard it's very wonderful and solid. So anyway, <laughs> so um, if you haven't seen the movie just check it out um, especially if you're a Muppet fan and I love Muppets, so I always have fun with it. So. Anyway, that's the Muppet Christmas Carol, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Saboro, and I'll see you later. Bye.